Welcome back to Carnades.org. In this video, we're going to be looking at instrumentalism and realism in science. There's an argument floating around out there that goes something like this. Science allows us to do useful things, cure disease, go to the moon, etc. If we believe in science, we will be able to do these useful things. Therefore, if you want to do useful things, we should believe in science. This is a charitable version of the argument. Most commonly, it's seen as, if you don't believe in evolution, don't go to a doctor. Or if you don't believe in science, don't use the internet. What I'm going to be doing is presenting an argument to the effect that the second premise, if we believe in science, we will be able to do useful things, is problematic. And in fact, it should rather be that if we want to do useful things, we should use science and belief doesn't need play a part in it. Let's take a look. So there's a distinction I'd like to make between a scientific realist and a scientific instrumentalist. Scientific realism says that scientific theories accurately describe the world, that science is actually telling us something about the world, whereas scientific instrumentalism says that scientific theories are useful for predicting and classifying, but do not relate to an objective truth and do not tell us something about the world. The scientific instrumentalist does not say we're getting knowledge, but rather merely that these theories are useful for some other purpose. Let's use an example. Imagine we're back, way back, in ancient Greece, and we have two farmers. One of them is a scientific realist, and one of them is a scientific instrumentalist. The realist believes that the geocentric model is true and plants his crops based on it. Geocentric, remember, is where the sun goes around the earth. The instrumentalist, on the other hand, finds the geocentric model useful for planting crops and plants his crops based on that model, but does not believe that that model is the case. As you can see, he can still plant his crops just fine without having that belief, merely using the concept, and still remain rational. Jump forward about 2,000 years or so. You have two cancer patients. One of them is a scientific realist. One of them is a scientific instrumentalist. The realist believes that evolution is the case and wants his doctors to use theories based on evolution to help cure him. The scientific instrumentalist, on the other hand, finds evolution is a useful model for curing disease, but doesn't believe in evolution or maybe just suspends judgment on it because he's not really sure. As you can see, the instrumentalist can get the same treatment as the realist, and will still remain rational, being able to hold that evolution can be a useful model without judging that it's actually telling us something about the way that the world works. So I would restructure the argument as follows. Sure, science allows us to do useful things. I'll give you that for now. If we believe in science, we'll be able to do these useful things? I'm not so sure. Belief in science is not required to use science. If we want to do useful things, we should use science. Science is a method. It's something that lets us do things. It's not something that forces us to know things, or really allows us to know things. I'll leave you with a quote from the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy on these positions. Excluding naive realists, most scientists are fallibilists in Pierce's sense. Scientific theories are hypothetical and always corrigible in principle. They may happen to be true, but we cannot know this for certain in any particular case. Watch this video and more at carnades.org and stay skeptical, everybody.